Many of you know me as the indie guy, and truthfully, that is one of my many loves in life. I've covered a lot of indie games, mostly on Steam, which is known as the most popular gaming program on PC. Well, <laughs> legally at least. There are other platforms similar to Steam, such as itch.io, which basically has its own community. One community I've never seen before, however, is a group of people who play Roku games. The games exist, but nobody knows about them, because Roku never marked marketed themselves as a gaming console. And there's probably a good reason why that's the case. Now, before you ruin my audience retention by going to your Roku TV, going to streaming channels, scrolling down once, moving to the right four times, hitting OK, and realizing there's about 400 games in this library, as if you're trying to input a version of the Konami cheat code, I'm literally going to do the heavy lifting for you by playing all 400 games myself and telling you about this insane journey that I stumbled upon. First of all, yes, there are three 385 games which means if i play 12 games each day i can play all the games in about a month and by a month i mean about a month and by about a month it ended up taking this many months but more importantly why was roku hiding this option i literally found it one day looked online to find only one guy talked about galaga on roku and another guy talked about kid-friendly games on the Roku for his son, and that was about it. Even if you hover over streaming channels, games are not available, and when you click on it, it's still not available. You literally have to scroll all the way down to even see this tab. This is absolutely terrible UI design, especially if you are specifically trying to look for the Roku games section, which makes me think this was done on purpose to hide this tab. Now, I'm not stating that as fact, I'm just saying that's kind of what it feels like at this very moment because <laughs> Roku did not do a very good job at gatekeeping the literal dozens of broken and unplayable games on their service, making them a terrible girl boss. There are only four tabs that are visible at all times when there's actually five tabs, which doesn't make any sense because below this is a section with five panels visible and some even have six panels that are visible. What are you hiding, Roku? Why are you gatekeeping your own games from the public! How many games are we talking here? Well, like I said, there's 385 games. Wait, hold on. That that doesn't sound right. Why doesn't that sound right? See, if we subtract the number of duplicate games from the total, we now get this number. I think I'm missing something though. See, if we subtract the broken and unplayable games that either don't work or are unplayable due to glitches leading to game-breaking happenstances, that now leaves us with a more accurate number. This is actually how many games you can play. So yes, while there are almost 400 games, the more you filter them out to try to find the ones that actually work and are not duplicates, the number is significantly lower. So this is about my third attempt of trying to do this because both times the camera mic just didn't work. So I have played over 300 Roku games so far. I am seeing the finish line. I am so close to being done with researching all of these games. So far, a lot of the games have been slots. So many slots. I've played so much slots the past five months because so far it's taken me five months to go through all of these games. I started in October, it's March. So yeah, there's a lot of slot games and I've never wanted to play slots and now I've played way too many slots. Some of these slot games ask you for your home address, you know, first and last name, phone number, email. Don't give them that info. Don't, don't do that. Share your name, address, email address, birth date, and gender with slot XL to start. Are you joking? No, I'm not giving this game my home address. What are you talking about? I know that it is a age verification thing. So that way, you know, kids aren't playing slots, but 
There are so many slots games on Roku for free that literally any kid could play it. So the ones that have the age verification don't even matter because the ones that don't are like super accessible to play. Half the time these slots use real currency and by that I mean it shows on screen real money in terms of like dollars. So you feel like you're losing money when no account is connected to the Roku for payment in the first place. I am, I'm so close to being done and I just wanna be done with it. There's a lot of games on the Roku, and to be honest, there's not a lot of good games. The whole reason why I did this is because I love supporting independent artists, and the Roku is a site and a program that not a lot of people know about in terms of using it as a gaming platform because they don't advertise it as such. So I wanted to go through all the games and I'm so close to going through all the games and I have found some actually good games. Less than 10 though <laughs> in a catalog of hundreds when a lot of the games are broken, duplicates, slots, some of them are just unplayable. There are just so many different versions of the same game, like same classic games, a lot of card games, a lot of things like Connect Four and Tic-Tac-Toe. But see, I'm not trying to find those specifics. I'm trying to find like the really good games that are like original. And there are a lot of original games, but most of them aren't even good. There are some licensed games, sure. Some of them don't work. Some of them are just bad literally the best licensed game i've found so far at least as far as i remember is trivia crack so trivia crack is fun on roku <laughs> i've been attempting to document every single roku game in existence so there are hundreds of files on my computer in the form of video files of these specific games and most of them aren't even worth showing because most of them are just boring or broken or unplayable or just a bunch of duplicates of the same concept or the same kind of game. There's also a lot of different developer names, which I haven't looked into yet, but we'll, we'll see what happens with that. There's just a lot of duplicates and there's a lot of games that are just worth skipping. And I'm trying to find the really good original games that are worth people's time. Out of the 384 games, there are quite literally only 12 worth talking about. Seven different developers have created games that are original, fun, and genuinely excite me for their future games. These are in no particular order, and the numbers given to them are the number in which they appear in the catalog, which could definitely change depending on whether or not they add or remove games, which has happened in this span of half a year of me researching Roku. The very first game in the catalog is Retaliate by Romans IXVI Gaming. I played this game for 10 minutes, which, well, it doesn't sound like a whole lot. The amount of times I've opened a game and immediately closed it after playing it for 30 seconds due to how bad of an experience it was, and because I had 400 games to sift through, that's saying a lot. However, this one I found actual fun in playing. Oh, you have to gain the, oh, um, I see. You have to catch the bullets and then shoot them. Okay, I actually really like that. This different gameplay mechanic made Retaliate a challenging experience where in order to attack, you have to block, meaning you can't just spam attack. You have to be super deliberate with every movement that you make. With three different modes to choose from, if you like space shooters, you'll enjoy this. Number 35 in the catalog is Neon Party Games. It's a party game where the controller is your phone. So think Jackbox, except with fast paced mini games. Six different modes to choose from, four of which you can play single player. And out of those four game modes, Geometry is probably my favorite. At number 50 is Druid's Tower by Matt Moore. It's a simple puzzle game with a retro pixel art aesthetic all about getting that coin. This is only half true, however, since there are two modes to this game. The other mode has you smashing a tower to try to get the best high score. Both of these game modes are fun in their own regards. 97 is Quartet by Marcelo LV Cabral. The futuristic techno art style mixed with the crunchy 8-bit sound font used for the audio atmosphere gives a face to this four-dimensional puzzle game. Super simple, but gets quite hard the longer you play, since you can no longer make perfect faces most of the time. Number 115 is Ants Free by KG Games. There are multiple versions of this game, but honestly, the free version is the one I played and the one I recommend. Here, you help ants get to the finish line by adding arrows to the board. At first, I was skeptical due to the lack of complexity, but eventually, you'll really have to start thinking once different colored arrows, ants, and exits start to get introduced, which did stump me a few times. 162, 
Monstrum Match by Matt Morse. Another banger by Mr. Morse. This game has four different game modes with very unique names and multiple difficulties to choose. The first is a simple match two game, which if this was the entirety of the game, I wouldn't have added it to this list of good games since there are countless versions of this on Roku. Second was a mastermind like game where you have to guess the four symbols in the right order, which I love mastermind. So this game mode was fun for me. Third was a card RPG. So depending on what you draw, you only have a few options to choose from, which refresh once all of the cards are gone and impacts your three bars, one for XP, one for defense and one for HP. Last one was an optional multiplayer game where the more points you collect from a specific row, the more your total goes up. 259 is a nominal wandering, again by Matt Morris. This one is pretty bare bones compared to some of his other games, but I didn't mind it honestly. This time it's an open world RPG containing a computer with various games, text boxes when you look at objects, and dialogue when you talk to people. While I couldn't find an actual objective, the game is for the vibes. So if you want to explore this land for free, you can. 260 is Dino Jump by Playworks Digital. At first, I wasn't impressed. But once I got a handle of the controls, I couldn't stop playing for a while. All you have to do is collect the clocks and not run out of time. That's it. While yes, the scenery occasionally changes and the character changes over time, there was just something borderline hypnotic about this game that kept me pushing the buttons on my remote. It's like an endless runner, but not as stressful. 310 is Starfarer by Alpha212. This is a turn-based, strategic, savior-like game. At first, I tried to go fast and died instantly, which means that you really have to be calculated with your movements. I think my only complaint is that it feels slower on bigger maps, but for a game like this, I don't mind. The it. last three games are 322, 328, and 332, all created by the same name, Sura. What was really interesting about these three games is that they are Game & Watch styled games. It also reminded me of those old McDonald's toys from back in the day. So yes, while it is some form of nostalgia talking, I do appreciate the different art styles and themes of each game, and also that the game speeds up after a while, which does add some difficulty to it. I found some posts on the Roku development site, but I figured the easiest way to find out how people actually get their games on Roku is to talk to someone, anyone, who's actually done it. There once was a binge watcher named Kreitke who asked how to make a Roku game. The solution was to download a game engine from Roman's Eye XVI from GitHub. This was from Necrotech, who upon clicking a link to his game, said it was developed by Matt Morse, one of the many developers who make good Roku games. Next was Roman's IXVI Gaming, which was created by Austin, independent game developer responsible for Retaliate and Neon Party games. More good Roku games. I basically searched for all of these developers to try to get into contact with them to try to figure out why Roku has so many broken and unplayable games. Marcelo responded, but because X is dumb, it wouldn't let me DM him, so I basically had to wait for him to respond somewhere else. A few hours later, I got a response. You need to join their development program at no cost, and once you are approved, use the developer portal to publish the apps to their channel store, and then sent me a link. At this site, it's revealed that there are four steps to follow. Create account, enroll in the developer program, get a Roku, and enable developer mode. Roku devs use BrightScript and SceneGraph to create its apps, so now we know both the how and the why all thanks to Marcelo. Theoretically, if you're accepted into the program and you have the freedom to upload it to the developer portal and there are all of these broken and unplayable games that are public, that would mean that Roku does not do a very good job at filtering the games that get submitted through the developer portal. Otherwise, there would be way less games. Mr. Roku, please, I beg of you. Remove all of your broken and unplayable games. No wonder you're ashamed of your own game catalog. You really went for quantity when you should have gone for quality. Speaking of games, if you're wondering why I don't talk much about games anymore, like I used to, there's a good reason for that. I have a side channel where I post highlight videos to highlight obscure indie games. I stream Thursdays and Fridays at 8 p.m. EST on Twitch, and the highlight videos go up on the same days except around noon. So if you want to see more underappreciated indie games, that's the best place to be, either on my Twitch or my Mr. Eth channel. Greetings, Mr. Eth! I am the Superjoy! Then why are you so angry? I don't know how to correctly express my feelings!